I'm Becky McCoy, and you're listening to Stories of Unfolding Grace, the podcast about grace during unexpected times. You'll hear from real people dealing with hard stuff, and I hope you'll feel encouraged that you can bravely live through hard stuff, too. This week I'm talking with Mary Kate White of the Simply Divine blog. Mary Kate was a self-proclaimed good girl who ended up finding herself pregnant before she was married. This is one of those episodes that may not be appropriate for younger listeners, uh, but do listen when you get a chance because you're definitely going to be encouraged. So I'm here with Mary Kate White of the Simply Divine blog, and she's going to tell us uh, about a specific struggle in her life, something that happened that caught her off guard and um, changed what she had envisioned for her life. So why don't you tell us a little bit about this season? So I was a recent college graduate. Um, I was a engaged bride-to-be, and on June 18th, 2013, um, the weekend after I went to register for my wedding gifts, the week before I was interviewing um, for a dream job of mine, I found out that I was pregnant with twins. Um, We were four months away um, from our dream wedding, and it rocked our world. It changed our life forever. And that, and so talk a little bit about why was that a shock? Because I feel like a lot of people now might, it might not be a big deal to get pregnant before you get married. Right. So my fiance and I had saved ourselves for um, the person that we were going to marry. And he proposed in that November of 2012, and we wanted to get settled into our careers and enjoy our last semester of college without the pressure of planning a wedding. So we decided to have a long engagement, and we planned for October of 2013. But it was in our engagement that the pressure of waiting to have sex became too much. We broke our promise to the Lord and to one another, and we fell into that temptation of to have sex before we got married, and we figured, why not? You know, everyone else seems to be doing it. They're not even engaged, but Andrew and I also were going to church on a regular basis. We both had very good reputations. You know, I guess you can call me the goody two-shoes of my high school. You know, just everyone was shocked when they found out that Andrew and I were pregnant. And so when I found out that I was pregnant on that day, I immediately went to just a place of why me? You know, why did this happen to me like I'm I'm a good person like I'm a good girl of all the people that have sex before they get married why did this happen to us so you find out you're pregnant yes yes and you guys hadn't even been planning on having sex before you get married right and you have this reputation that you would keep that promise and that people expected you to follow through on that and so now what happens people are finding out you said um you ended up moving your mayor like you moved your wedding date up so we did so i'll um yes i'll talk a little bit about that so that day that we found out we were pregnant um my doctor came in i had gone in for just a routine Checkup. I did not think that I was pregnant. Um, I'd been on birth control 
um, for a while and just, you know, for, for other health reasons, not necessarily to keep me from getting pregnant, but, um, so I, th- it was the last thing on my mind. I just thought I'm going in for my routine checkup and I came out knowing that I was pregnant with twins and when so she, not just one baby, not just one baby, <laughs> oh, my two word. babies. <laughs> so I, um, when she came in to tell me, you know, she asked if we were sexually active. I of course was honest with her. Um, she was the first person that I was honest with about that. Wow. I hadn't told my friends, you know, I hadn't told anybody. I mean, it was just Andrew and I that mm-hmm. knew. And cause we were, we felt guilty. We felt ashamed for that. And we wanted to hide that from mm. everyone. Yeah. And so she was the very first person I was honest with. And I knew I had to be honest with her. I mean, she's my doctor and And she told me, she was like, well, Mary Kate, you are pregnant. And I immediately started hyperventilating. The nurse had to come in and give me a sedative because I just thought, okay, all the pressure of what are people going to think? Oh, yeah. You know, what what is going to happen with our wedding that we have planned, that my parents have put down payments on stuff? Like, you know, what is, what's going to happen? I mean... And so she came in and did the Doppler, you know, where you hear the heartbeat on Mm -hmm. top of the stomach. And we only heard one heartbeat. And she said, okay, well, I'm going to, I want you to get an ultrasound to see how far along you are. So that was a 45 minute wait. And in that 45 minutes, my head is just all over the place. And I go in to get the ultrasound and... I see, I hear the heartbeat and I see something on the screen and the ultrasound technician said, well, you have two healthy heartbeats. And I was shocked. I was like, I'm so surprised that my heartbeat is healthy right now. I feel like it is through the roof. That's amazing. I would have said something like that too. (laughs) She was like, um, no, you're having twins. And I was like, what? I was floored. I was like, no way. So I said so that day we found out we were having twins and um, we were ironically having our first wedding shower the next week, that following weekend. And so Andrew and I had to go home to my hometown and, and tell my parents and tell my family and we immediately knew that the wedding was going to have to change. Um, mm. And so we talked to my parents about it. We talked to Andrew's parents about it. And at that time, we just thought we were pregnant with twins. We didn't realize um, just how rare our twins were. Yeah, so, so talk a little weeks, bit about that. Okay, so two weeks later, we my um, doctor had called me. And she said, I want you to come in. Um, I need to talk to you. Um, just a special circumstance about your pregnancy. And she said, can your, you know, can your fiance come with you? And, and he wasn't able to, he had a work situation. And, and so my mom and my mother-in-law went with me and I walked into her office and I could tell immediately something was not right Mm. and she sat me down and she said I just want you to know how rare your case is and she said you know you are pregnant with monoamniotic twins and the only thing I knew about twins at that point were was that you know are they identical or fraternal I didn't know you know mono die mono 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 you know everything and so she told me that they were mono in the attic, which means that they shared everything. Essentially, they were in the same sack. And mono in the attic is where, like, your Siamese twins come from. Okay. So um, we ran the re- – our first ultrasound picture, she – that day – she had not ruled out if our girls were Siamese or not because like it was almost like they were spooning one another. And so they knew that day 
um, when I found out I was tw- that I was having twins, that they were mono mono, but they didn't want to tell me that because I had already like right. gotten so much information the day I found out. And so she, you know, she told me that they were mono amniotic, and that means mono amniotic twins happen out of one out of every sixty thousand pregnancies. And they make up every 1% of all twin pregnancies. Wow. And only 50% um, make it to viability, and 95% are born prematurely. And so I was taking in all this information, and, and mind you, this is just over two weeks of time that I found out I'm having twins. And then I get used to the, you know, almost used to the idea of having twins. And then I get this news of they may not make it, you know, mm-hmm. that they may be Siamese. They may, you know, be born with severe birth defects. I mean, they may, right. they will more than likely be born prematurely. And so it was just a lot to take in. And, and then also be planning a wedding, Um, and so she had told me that day that I really needed to take things slow and that it was probably best for me to move back home, um, with my parents. Mm -hmm. And so I had been in Greensboro, North Carolina. Um, that's where I went to school when I was doing an internship at the alumni association where I went to school. And so I had to stop and I moved back home and um, we immediately started making plans to move our wedding from October um, to August because she told us, she said, you know, you may have babies in October and this was July 3rd. And when I was, was like, your due date? January 24th. Okay. And so, you know, she said, you will more than likely be in the hospital at 24 weeks. Um, and I was 24 weeks, October 10th. And our original wedding date was October 26th, wow. um, which ironically, I was admitted to the hospital two days later on the 28th. And so it was just a crazy, crazy time. Um, mm. So we... I went home and we were planning the wedding. Um, We were trying to figure out where to live. And we got married on August 10th and went on our honeymoon to Charleston. We were there for three days. And um, then the day we got back, so we got back to Raleigh on a Wednesday I moved into our apartment, and that Thursday is when we found out we were having twin girls. So I had a doctor's appointment. So that was in a in a week. I got married, went on a honeymoon, moved, and found out I was having twin girls. So it was all just really crazy. So you had just all this thrown at you all these things in life changed in the matter of like two months, a month, two months. Right. And then you said the girls were born at the end of October. They were, they were born on November 11th. Okay. 2013. So I was admitted. Um, I'd gone to my doctor that Monday morning and I had just been at a baby shower the day before. Andrew and I had gone to the state fair that weekend. And I went to see my doctor and she said, why are you not in the hospital? And I said, what do you mean? <laughs> and she said, "We're you need to go to Chapel Hill right now. Um, so Yikes. that day that I was admitted on October 28th, they thought that the girls would be born that day. Um, and so, and they told me once they settled down on the monitors and, and sort of untangled themselves. So the risk that mono mono twins have, and, and it's essentially what ended up happening the day they were born is there's no membrane dividing their sacs. Right. And so each of the girls had their own umbilical cord, but what could happen is 
one umbilical cord could get wrapped around the other baby and so that's what would happen and so okay. we had three false alarms um, before the girls were born on November 11th and yeah and the day they were born it was crazy I had just had a false alarm that Saturday November 9th and that Monday Andrew had gone to work my mom was staying with me at the hospital I had a great morning session. Everything seemed to be going great. And then that afternoon, I started feeling bad. So our nurse came in, and she pulled the babies up on the monitor, and we couldn't find Leah's heartbeat. And so she did that at 3.30, and the girls were born at 4.25 and 4.26. And so I had an emergency C-section. Andrew um, made it just in time to kiss me on the forehead before I was wheeled in Mm. to surgery. Um, They had to give me general anesthesia so I don't remember anything. I didn't wake up till 7.30 that night. So when I woke up, I I didn't even know if they were alive. Like, I didn't know if if they were here. Um, but Leah was born at two pounds, 13 ounces, and Amelia was born at three pounds, three ounces. So they immediately went to the NICU. Um, I did not see them for the first time till the next day and they were separated. Leah was in a isolated room, Mm -hmm. um, and Amelia was out in a warmer bed with the other babies in the open room and in their pod, um, and then the NICU, and it was just a complete whirlwind. I just felt like I, you know, I was literally thrown into motherhood, mm-hmm. and in this state of motherhood that was not normal. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not necessarily that I was found out that I was pregnant and then had a healthy pregnancy, and and everything was okay. You know, we had our babies three months after we got married, Mm -hmm. and it was just, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to think. I was just in this whirlwind of just doing the next thing. Yeah, so talk a little bit about, like, how did you react emotionally? Did you even have a capacity to react emotionally? (laughs) That's a lot. That is a lot. So, no, not really. Um, So when I first found out that we were expecting, um, I'll I'll never forget. I, I went into a very dark place of why is this? happening why is this happening to me you know I'm I'm a good person and why am I having to let go of my dream wedding and let go of my plans and let go of you know life as I knew it but I I remember being home and My mom had this book by Priscilla Schreier um, called Life Interrupted, Mm. and I picked it up, and I started reading, um, and I could only read, like, every few pages before I would get sick. I was so, I had morning sickness so bad. Yikes. Um, And I remember her talking about how Things that we see as life interruptions are, are sometimes God gives us as divine interventions. Mm. And so I knew, you know, I was like, okay. And then when we found out about all the statistics and how rare the girls were, mm. I, I knew I was like, okay, God is doing this for a reason. He is putting me on this journey for a reason. And I just didn't know what that was yet. But I knew after reading that, I was like, okay, I can either stay in this state of pity or I could look forward to all the good things that are ahead for our family. I knew Mm -hmm. that 
Andrew and I loved one another. I knew that we were not getting married because of this pregnancy. Um, And so I started to find the joy in what a blessing this was. Mm -hmm. Um, Instead of seeing this as a interruption, you know, I thought about all the other women out there who would love to be in my position. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was able to conceive twins naturally and that, it's a huge blessing. Yeah. For and, sure. and so I thought about the woman out there who was taking her 15th pregnancy test that still said negative and, and how she would love to be in my position. And, and then I started feeling guilty for even seeing this as a bad thing, mm-hmm. you know, um, because, it has been the best thing that's ever happened to me. Choosing to live bravely and authentically is important to me, and I'm guessing it's something you are interested in too. You can learn more about my story at my blog, beckylmccoy.com. Stop by and sign up to receive my monthly newsletter. It includes all sorts of interesting tidbits and family updates. Check the show notes for details. Hey, I'd love your help with something. If you're enjoying Stories of Unfolding Grace, please share it with your friends and subscribe in iTunes. If you leave a rating, it'll help other listeners to find the podcast. Thanks so much for being on this journey with me. How did you see grace through all of this? Because it completely shifted the track of your life. This is not what you saw yourself doing no, at 23. It, no, it was it was definitely not. So before this happened to me, I, you know, like I was saying, I saw myself as, as the good girl, mm-hmm. you know, I I went to church, I went to Sunday school, I led a Bible study in college, I went to Bible study, I read my Bible, but I had a um, checklist faith, you know, I checked it all off, my good deed for the day, and that was it, you know, Mm -hmm. I I was doing things, I I didn't have... um, a personal relationship with the Lord. I didn't understand, you know, what his grace really meant in my life. Mm -hmm. I just thought I had to be perfect. I thought I had to be the perfect student, the perfect daughter, the perfect friend, um, the perfect future wife, you know, the perfect fiance. And, and I, put a lot of pressure on myself. And so for this particular um, situation to happen and for us to find out, okay, we are pregnant, I immediately thought, flaw. Like, I'm going to be marked by this right. forever. That's like, it. I, You'll never be loved in the right, same way again. Right. Yeah. Like, I, I'm going to be judged by this. I'm going to be chastised by this. I grew up in a very small town. And I knew, I mean, nothing stays quiet in a small town ever. And I knew that as soon as people found out, you know, oh, my word, Mary Kay Moretti is pregnant with twins and she's not married yet. Like, Mm -hmm. that scared me because I did have this reputation of being a good girl. Mm -hmm. And so I just immediately was like... I have to do something like I can't, I'm about to be a wife. I'm about to be a mom. I have to change my outlook. Like I have to change Mm -hmm. my perspective on how I see grace, how I give myself grace, how I know that God, you know, how does God, when, how does God look at me? You know, when he sees that I broke this promise to him, when he sees that, I disrespected his son and Andrew, like, you know, how is he going to look at me and still love me? And 
so I, you know, immediately thought, you know, maybe my faith wasn't as strong as I thought it was, you know, up until this particular season, you know, I had that formal relationship where how often do I read my Bible, go to church, you know, I was your average Christian good girl. And so I think, you know, I realized that maybe moving out of my own need to control things, my own need to try and live in that perfect state of being the perfect person all the way around, I just needed to let it go and and just to rest in the Lord and and rest in Him, you know, and and let His grace cover me and, and say, it's okay. Like, even though you make mistakes, even though you let others down, you let me down. I still love you. Mm-hmm. I, I, you know, I'm going to give you a clean slate. There's nothing that you have done in your past. There's nothing that you will do in the future. That's going to make me stop loving you. Um, and so, and obviously, as you know, like parenting is, <laughs> makes you, so humble. I mean, yes. <laughs> and so I think that the Lord gave me two because right. He was like, "You need it double." Like, <laughs> Calm you know, down, Mary Kate. Let's that's get right. refocused. That's yeah. right. So I mean, I'm going to send you these two little children, and now they're two. They are two. They are two. And our NICU journey was, you know, we were in the NICU for 98 days. We, Amelia had her first heart surgery at three weeks old, and we were finally able to bring them home around their three months' birthday. And during that time, and, and you know, just through everything, through meeting other parents in the NICU, through forming relationships with our nurses, and and witnessing all that we did in the NICU, I mean, just completely changed our world I mean Mm. and to bring our girls home at three months was great you know we we missed that newborn stage really of up all night I mean I was I was still up all night but for different reasons for different reasons and so but no they are healthy and strong and strong willed. <laughs> That's so and, wonderful. Um, you know, crazy, crazy, crazy. Our days are just pure chaos, but I see our days and I, and I see, I just see life differently. You know, whenever I look at the girls, I. I see a portrait of God's grace because Mm. that's what they are. And I just see the miracle that God allowed me to witness through the beginning days of their life. Um, You know, I was given the gift and I had to see it this way um, to watch a baby grow when it was supposed to be inside of me. Um, to watch them grow on the outside yeah, and, and to see life come together, you know, and, and to see that. And because when the girls were first born, their skin looked like an onion, you know, I've heard it looks so like paper thin. It does. Like, you know, we couldn't, the nurses had to give a, you know, they had to place the girls, you know, Mm -hmm. on our, we, I couldn't hold them I couldn't touch them you know they had to come in and place them on us and and just with the you know they had to just handle them so tenderly and so carefully Mm. and it was just insane so now when I see them going crazy and and throwing temper tantrums I have to remind myself this is what you prayed for yeah (laughs) like you didn't even know if they'd be born prayed for right yes for sure so how did you choose to live bravely and authentically as a result of this life change I think I'm not running from our story I think I'm not hiding from the fact that 
I was pregnant when I got married. I could easily hide um, that Andrew and I got pregnant before we got married, that we didn't have the honeymoon that we had planned, that, you know, that we have this ideal picture perfect family Mm -hmm. now, you know, that, that didn't start in such a different way, in such a abnormal way, Mm -hmm. um, you know, that we had the, you know, that I was able to experience the ideal pregnancy of, you know, telling my husband that we were pregnant rather than calling him in a parking lot of a doctor's office and saying, get to Greensboro right now, you know, or, you know, not writing wedding thank you notes and baby thank you notes like in the same day, you know, and not having a wedding shower and a baby shower being planned at the same time. And, you know, so I can pretend to hide from that um, or that things didn't happen the way they did. Mm -hmm. I could easily hide the fact um, and not be honest with others when, you know, they say, okay, well, when did y'all get married? Or I could easily say August 10th, you know, or, and when were the girls born? Hmm, three months later, right. you know, like just I could, being honest, even though that there, right. there could be a lot of shame and right. Um, it could be a barrier. Right. With people. Yeah. Right. So I think just being upfront and honest with our story and, and wanting to share our story of redemption and and grace because I want to let other moms out there know. I want to let, you know, for the girl out there that, you know, did get pregnant on accident and she is facing an unplanned pregnancy, um, that it could be the greatest thing, even though it may not be the, you know, at the time, you know, you're thinking, how did this happen? You know, this is going to change my life. I mean, let it change your life because Mm -hmm. I let it change mine and it's been the best thing that's ever happened to me. It's just funny how we think we have things all figured out and we, I mean, we have no clue what God's going to do next. I mean, (laughs) yes. And I I know that you, you know that firsthand too. And it's just, it's crazy how he intervenes just when we need him to. Yep, totally. So, mm-hmm. Well, thank you for, as you said, you are being brave with your story and um, choosing to share it even when you know that there are people that it may change how they look at you. And it, mm-hmm. even though that's not right... <laughs> but it right. might because people are people and right um so i'm 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 proud of you we just met right oh, now on skype but i'm i'm proud of thank you for you thank taking that you step. so i have a few questions for you you said yes. you've listened to other episodes so i have some fun questions now yes yes so what are you loving right now so i guess i can say what i'm loving is um i just celebrated my birthday this past week And my husband, thank you. My husband gave me a Fitbit for my birthday. So that is what I have been wanting. You know, I was curious to see how many calories I would burn between dinner time and bath time. (laughs) Having twin two year olds. (laughs) Right. And so I was curious for that because I haven't been to the gym. Um, This is awful but I have not been to a gym since before I had the girls uh, I, yeah you no, know I get it right so I was like this can be a way of seeing how I'm taking care of myself yeah um, that's great so I'm really liking it I got the Fitbit flex and okay. I have loved it so far awesome what, yes what is your favorite meal or snack or treats oh gosh everything (laughs) this is where the fitbit and i do not agree um (laughs) you know because you have to put in your calories and i don't want to say i had two cups of coffee this morning with extra 
non fat free cream, you know. Right. Um, but no, I well, right now, I guess, do y'all have Outback? Yeah, where you are. Okay, so Outback has the an appetizer, it's like the Alice Springs chicken quesadilla. Okay, um, and the last time we went there, they were handing them out as a sample. And they were really good. And I told my husband, I was like, I'm going to try and make those at home. And they've easily become one of our favorite dinner options. Oh, yeah. So, that sounds delicious. So I guess that, that's that been a, a favorite in our house, you know, for the past couple of weeks. Because uh-huh. it's easy. It, it's something that I can make ahead of time. Yep. Um, sure. While the girls are napping and can throw together easily. So I mm-hmm. like you know, recipes that I oh, can do that's that. That's so important. I hear you. Yes. You are not alone yes. in that. Yes. So you started to answer this question a little bit, but what are you doing to take care of yourself? Well, yeah. So I guess, you know, that is, would be the, um, Fitbit. But one thing, um, that I've been doing lately, you know, we recently um, moved from North Carolina to Wisconsin. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, in North Carolina, I had my village of, I had my support team there, you yeah. know, my mother and my mother-in-law were only an hour and a half from us. Um, my best friends were in that town. My, my favorite babysitters, Andrew's cousins, um, mm-hmm. Katie and Maddie were you know, 15 minutes down the road. Yeah. And so to move up here, I really, you know, it's just me taking care of the girls. We really haven't found a a babysitter yet. And so we've been here for about six months. And so I'm excited about the Fitbit because now I can physically take care of myself. But I guess since we've been up here, one thing that I've done is I've really tried to take the time for my sanity Mm -hmm. um to read and to relax and and to make sure that I plan out my day so I have that time yeah um so I guess that's one thing that I've been doing I read the fringe hours by Jessica Turner okay um and she really helped me through that just trying to figure out okay I no longer have this help readily available how can I still make time for myself and you know raise two two two-year-olds at the same time yeah definitely okay the last question is what are you doing to be brave who I'm living in Wisconsin yeah that's a huge (laughs) so yes um my husband um works for Chick-fil-a Um, and he, it is his dream to own and operate his own store. Okay. And so we are currently on that journey. And so just trust in the Lord completely with our future. We don't Mm -hmm. know where we will be next is one thing I'm doing to be brave. Um, and I think it's just so funny how the Lord has worked in my life the past three years. Um, I mean, I was a I was an event planning major okay. for college, so that should tell you how much I love to plan. Right. Um, <laughs> so just letting go of the plans that I think are the best for our family, mm-hmm. um, and just trusting that the Lord is going to take care of us, and that the Lord is going to take us to a community where we can really um, share His love, and you yeah. know. I think, I guess that's how I'm, I'm living, you know, choosing to be brave and just trusting. It's true. It's so So, hard to let go of your vision and control for your life. And it is, and just, it it is so hard. Know that, that maybe there is something better. Like we, we tend to be so proud that like I've come up with the best plan and, and like, wait, maybe something is better. Right. Yeah. I mean, a year ago, we were in Raleigh. Um, you know, we we were excited to see where the Lord was going to take us in the next step with Andrew's career. Mm-hmm. And I would have never in a million years guessed 
that it would have brought us to Pewaukee, Wisconsin. Right. Like, I mean, if you know me, you know I'm a Southern girl at heart, uh-huh. through and through. You can hear it in my accent. Right. And, I mean, everybody up here is like, where are you from? <laughs> you know? You're exotic and, in Wisconsin. Yes. <laughs> and so, you know, but it has been such... You know, it's it's just been such a good move for us. Like, I never in a million years would have thought that coming to Wisconsin, of all places. I mean, when we told people we were moving to Wisconsin, you know, they're like, why? What what, What's in Wisconsin? Like, really? You know, the winter and everything, the cold. um, Very different from North Carolina. Very different. Very different. But... You know, it's just funny how something I would have never in a million years thought Mm -hmm. would be a good thing has turned out to be a really good thing. Next week, I'm talking with Laura Fleetwood of Seeking the Still. She used to have it all together, and she was able to get everything done like Superwoman, and then she had a breakdown, and it's completely changed the way that she interacts with the world. You know, that's the crux of it, is that we, we're not doing other women and other people any favors by pretending we have it all together. We're making the issue worse. And, and it's harder for people to um, connect with you when you have that, that kind of aura about you. If you're interested in sharing your story of unfolding grace, head to my blog, beckylmccoy.com, and click on the submissions button. I can't wait to hear from you. Thanks again for joining me. I'm really looking forward to next week.